A Calzones. It was a Calzone. A Calzones? Betrayed me? Crust on the bottom. Filling. Crust on top. What am I describing? A pie. No, but you're in the right zone. The locale. Calzone. Zone. You know what I like? Calzones. What the hell's wrong with this guy? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the many shapes that calzones take in the world of Ben Wyatt. I know I promised you guys a JoJo episode in a recent Twitter poll, but I couldn't get a hold of some necessary ingredients, so keep an eye out for that next week. First up in our trio of calzone stylings is calzone apple pie. We've made a number of apple pies on this show, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through the instructions. Food processor, 300 grams of all-purpose flour, 2 tablespoons sugar, 1 teaspoon kosher salt, 225 grams unsalted cold cubed butter. Process until the butter is the size of peas and gently combined with six to eight tablespoons of ice water gently mixed into a ball of dough wrapped in plastic wrap and refrigerated for at least one hour. <sighs> Two pounds of honey crisp apples, cored, peeled, and thinly sliced. Place in a large bowl and toss with the juice of one lemon to prevent oxidation, aka browning. In another bowl, combine three quarters of a cup of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, one quarter cup of brown sugar, two teaspoons cinnamon, half teaspoon of ground ginger, half teaspoon ground allspice, quarter teaspoon ground cloves, a zest of one lemon, and a teaspoon of kosher salt. Tiny whisk to combine, perfect. Add to the sliced apples and toss until evenly coated. Take a moment to ponder how lucky you are that it's your job to make apple pies. Taste the apples for seasoning, and then it's time to roll out the pie dough. On a well-floured surface, we're going to pound and then roll out our pie dough to a rough oval shape, using half that oval to line a glass pie plate, filling the pie shell with our apples and their accumulated juices, brushing down the opposing edge of the pie dough with egg white to seal, covering with the opposite side of the oval, trimming, crimping, venting, brushing with egg white, and sprinkling with demerara sugar, placing in an oven preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, reducing the temperature to 375, and baking for 45 to 55 minutes. And there you have it, the calzone apple pie, which, despite my overclock, to voiceover I thought would be nice with some coffee, perhaps served up out of the plate, calzone style. First, let's take a look at a rare apple pie cross-section. Fascinating. Slice into somewhat more manageable yet still unwieldy long skinny slices, and dig into one of the best and strangest apple pies I've ever made. The filling is warm and syrupy and spicy, the crust flaky and crisp even on the bottom, but it's our first and last sweet calzone. Our next two destinations are savory, and for them both we're going to need a simple tomato sauce. Sauce. Something else we've made countless times on this show, so once again, we're going to breeze through it. Into a high-walled saute pan goes two tablespoons of olive oil that we're going to heat over medium-high until shimmering, in which we're going to sweat half a small finely minced onion for two minutes, sauteing two crushed cloves of garlic and two tablespoons of tomato paste for one minute before adding a sometimes squirty 28-ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. Crushing up, adding a sprig of fresh basil, partially covering, lowering the heat, and simmering for about an hour and a half until thickened and deepened in flavor. Optionally pureeing to a finer consistency using an immersion blender, seasoning to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper pepper, and finishing with a glug of extra olive oil. Okay, back to normal kits, because we're venturing into as yet unexplored Babishian territory, namely the low cal calzone zone, which despite being about the same in calories but higher in fiber, I think is going to call for a whole wheat crust. So we're going to follow this recipe from America's Test Kitchen that calls for eight and a quarter ounces whole wheat flour combined with five and a half ounces of bread flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of instant yeast, and two teaspoons of honey in the bowl of a food processor. We're just going to lightly process those together until they are thoroughly combined, and then we're going to perform the very clever trick of thoroughly kneading our dough using the food processor. First, we're going to measure out one and a quarter cups ice water, which we're going to pour into the processor's feed tube while the machine runs. This is going to bring our ingredients together into a ball of dough. As soon as it does, stop the machine and let everything rest for 10 minutes, which is going to help with water absorption. Then we're adding two tablespoons of olive oil and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and letting our spinny cutty machine run for one minute straight, during which time it's going to knead our dough better than any human being could, with the exception of maybe Ron Swanson. He's got some dough kneading mitts. I'm sure he would hate that I said that. Now this dough is very sticky, so to make it more handleable, we're going to olive oil both our mitts and work surface, turn out our pre-calzone goo out onto the counter, and give it a few cursory kneads to make sure that there are no dry spots. Then we're going to use the dough's stickiness to pull it into a taut ball, which we're then going to plop into a lightly oiled bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and allow to ferment in the fridge for at least 18 hours and up to three days. Not only is this going to drastically 
improve flavor. This is a very high hydration dough, around 80%, so it's going to make it much easier to play with. After a couple days in the fridge, we're taking it out of the bowl and dividing it into twain, both pieces of which we're going to stretch into taut balls. I feel like I'm saying that a lot recently. Place on a lightly oiled rimmed baking sheet, lightly oiled themselves, and loosely covering in plastic wrap, and that's where the testicular similarities end. Because if your balls do this after an hour and a half at room temperature, see a doctor. Extract the first dough ball, keeping the other under cover of plastic wrap, and coat it thoroughly on both sides with all-purpose flour. From this point on, we're treating it pretty much like pizza dough, aka your grandfather's calzone. Which again sounds like a testicular thing. Anyway, we are patting, stretching, and passing knuckle over knuckle this dough until it reaches about a 12-inch round. At which point we can commence not to topping, but filling. With what you ask, well, healthy stuff. I'm gonna saute some broccoli and some olive oil, add some red peppers, maybe some baby spinach, baby bok choy, and mustard greens. Just ask yourself, what would Chris Traeger put in a calzone? Part skim mozzarella, which is kind of like worse mozzarella. Part skim ricotta, which is kind of like wallpaper paste. Our sauteed veggies, and what the hell, another layer of part skim mozzarella. If you're gonna have a healthy thing, you might as well have too much of it, right? That's how being healthy works. Anyway, I'm brushing down the outer rim of the dough with plain old water, and gently folding this pizza into a much more complicated calzone. Crimping the edges shut with a fork, and then as an additional preventative measure against blowouts, I'm going to decoratively fold the crust closed, or at least decoratively to the best of my limited ability. And there you have it, the Pawnian Pariah, the calzone. Onto a lightly floured, dusted pizza peel it goes, and onto a pizza stone in a preheated 550 degree Fahrenheit oven it will be plopped, until it emerges burnished and browned and done. We're gonna let this guy sit undisturbed for about five minutes to let those fillings calm down a little bit before slicing in half and taking a gander at that cross section. Now one good thing about low fat ingredients, they're much less watery than full fat mozz and regat. So we end up with a pretty good looking calzone, which despite being a low cal calzone, I'm gonna divide into four pieces for easy sharing. Because this whole thing clocks in at just over a thousand calories, but half will run you a much more reasonable 528 calories. So not exactly what I would call low cal, but about as low cal as calzones can go. And I gotta say, really quite good. The crust is nutty and weedy and tender. The fillings are plenty flavorful and cheese stretchy. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a perfectly healthy lunch for two. On the decidedly less healthy end of the spectrum are the mini calzones, which Ben described as a savory pastry, so I'm gonna make another batch of pie dough, this time with no sugar, rested in the fridge for an hour while I shred up some full fat mozzarella, which is much easier to shred if you let it chill in the freezer for about 20 minutes, which I did not do. And then in Ben's own words, the Calzones betrayed him by giving him food poisoning, so I've got some Italian sausage here well past its prime. Let's just give it a sniff test to make sure to- oh yeah, that is ripe. I'm just kidding, of course, this is some pre-cooked chicken sausage that I thought looked kind of wrong. Anyway, we are retrieving our savory pastry dough from the fridge, turning it out onto a well-floured surface, and pounding and rolling it out to a large round, about four-ish centimeters thick. Then we need about a four and a half inch biscuit cutter. This lid from my protein powder will do nicely, and we're going to use that to cut this dough into miniature rounds. Then from there, it's just a matter of filling and deep frying. That's right, deep fried pie dough. So into each of these little rounds, I'm going to place a tiny dab of sauce, a little pressed together mound of our mozzarella cheese, a little dollop of full fat regat, and a couple pieces of our pretend expired sausage. Then comes the delicate act of folding. Once again, I'm going to wet down the outside edge to act as a sort of sealant, tucking our fillings gently into the little pocket and pressing the edge down to seal. You have to work quickly at this stage because the butter is going to begin to melt, and we want to maintain as many of those layers of butter as possible before deep frying. Once again, I'm going to attempt to place a decorative crimp on the outside with mixed results, and this guy is ready for the deep fry. In a cast iron skillet, I'm going to heat about a quart of oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and drop these guys in for about one and a half to two minutes per side. It's at this time that I'm going to pray to whatever god will hear me that my fillings don't explode out the side of my calzones, because this is the last of my frying oil. But the water and crimping sealant held true, and my empanadas, I mean calzones, emerged looking perfect, almost exactly like the ones that we saw in the show. Once you're done frying up the rest of your delicate dough pockets, it's time to let them cool off before trying them, otherwise this might happen. A boiling hot cheese blowout that you're not even going to notice is burning your skin because these things taste so darn good. Mmm. Ouch. 
After letting these guys cool off for about 5 minutes, we can examine them a little more closely. As you can see, pie dough has responded extraordinarily well to deep frying. It is light and flaky and crispy, and it's filled with melty cheese, piping hot sauce, and seasoned meat, exactly the way I imagined them when Ben described them. After trying these delectable little appetizers, it's hard to imagine why Ponyans are so opposed to calzones. Then again, these people live and die for a place called Paunch Burger, which actually sounds pretty good. Maybe I should try that next episode.